So today we will be talking about kinematics of particles. There are three or four lectures on this topic. So let's first go over the basics. We are dealing with particles. And motion of particles can be described in using vectors. So if you remember the, the equations like oh, So equations like f equals ma, or in another form, uh, f equals p dot, p being the momentum of a particle. So these equations here and here, we are dealing with kinematics. So that, that makes sense that we start by analyzing the kinematics, then we can go to the other side and analyze the forces and torques that um, activate or generate those movements. So we are dealing with vectors. Just a quick reminder, um, vectors are, what? Okay. Um, vectors, are quantities that have some magnitude and direction, right? So these vectors um, are essentially some arrows in a space. It really doesn't matter what, from what perspective we are looking at. So imagine my pen is a vector. So this exists, doesn't matter how I look at it. I can have a coordinate frame and that coordinate frame gives me some perspective. So it, uh, as I change my coordinate frame, the components of this vector along the axis of the coordinate frame chain. But remember that we are dealing with um, the same vector. It, it is the same quantity, just the uh, representation of it has changed. So what we can do, let me change color. We can have a, a vector and view it in a coordinate frame like this, like that. So E1, E2, E3. And the projection of this um, vector onto, going back to blue, onto the coordinate frame is this, in this, if we have the vector V, the projections give us the components along that. So in other words, I can write my vector V as a, a combination of essentially three uh, vectors. V1, E1 is a, the vector along the axis E1 plus V2, E2, plus V3, E, E3. So these, this is how we can describe a vector in a given or known coordinate frames. So there are many choices and many um, easy to use ways to define these coordinate frames. We'll get, get that in, in the next video. But a famous one is the Cartesian coordinate frame, and that is the familiar X, Y, Z. So usually drawn like this. We describe them or show them with I, J, and K. And we can write um, the, the vector V as some um, V. Vx, what Vxi plus Vyj plus Vzk. These are the components along the x and y, x, y, and z. Uh, well, I didn't draw the the v. This is the v. So one thing we we need to do is very often here you see 
uh, we're dealing with accelerations or velocities, uh, time derivative of those. So it makes sense that we need to be able to take derivative of um, a vector to get velocities and acceleration, for instance. But before getting into that, let's look at a very general case. So I have, let me draw it again. Oops. With a different color. What color? I like this green. So I have my coordinate frame. It is E1, E2, E3. And I have an arbitrary vector. Can you draw it like this? Called A, some vector A. You want to find derivative of A. So I know A is some A1, E1, plus A2, E2, plus A3, E3. Now I can take derivative a dot is um, for each of these there are two uh, pieces multiplied together so it's the derivative of product so I have a dot 1 e1 plus a1 e dot 1 plus the same a2 dot e2 plus a2 e dot 2 a3 dot E3 plus A3 E dot 3. Okay. So the first one, these are kind of easy to interpret and deal with. So if, if I have the component, this is A2. What, does, what this means is the rate of change of essentially this length along the axis of E2. Now we can look at two cases where the frame is fixed. Fixed. So in this case, the, the coordinates e1 e2 and e3 they don't change so e dot is zero there's no change in time uh, they don't change with time so what i'm left with is a dot is a dot oh. a dot one e1 plus a dot two oops E2 plus A dot 3 E3. So if this is my coordinate frame, it is fixed in a space, and my my vector is just changing with time, I can look at how fast the component of them along the axis change, and that would give me the derivatives. The other case that is a little more interesting, and we deal with it a lot, is frame rotates. So in this case, let me try a different color, orange. So I have the frame, and the frame is rotating about some axis omega. So remember, we can define this rotation by a vector along the axis. The norm of that vector is omega, and the direction is defined by right-hand rope. And we saw in, the, in this case that E dot 1, for instance, one of them. So each of these basis vectors or unit vectors 
are rotating about that axis. So the rate of change is omega, that vector that you can define, omega cross E, E1. So if I substitute these E dot 1, E dot 2, E dot 3, what I have is A dot 1, L, A dot, let's write it this way, A dot equals A dot 1, E1 plus A dot 2, E2 plus A dot 3, E3 plus now the other terms, these ones, will give me, I, I can factor out omega, and I will have omega cross A1, E1 plus A2, E2 plus A3, E3. Or, in a more compact way, I can write it as a dot relative. So that is if I, my coordinate frame is rotating, but my perspective rotates with it too. And that is this relative measurement of a dot. So if this is the the measurement an observer sees if the observer sits on the frame and rotates with the frame plus this omega oh, it needs one of these omega cross a so this is rather useful for that we will use a few times in the next video the first one, as I mentioned, this one is um, relative, relative observation or relative, uh, how do I write it? Relative change observed by observer sitting on the frame and this term is considers the effect effect of rotation of the frame and this one is um, actual or total change of A vector A so keep this in mind uh, in the next video we will use this to work with a, a bunch of different um, more or less famous coordinate frames and see how we can derive the position velocity and accelerations equations for those in different frames okay see you later